I've just about run out of intros to say for RGB keyboards and mice. We've run through so many that, honestly, they're all becoming a little bit of a blur with each other. Now, Cougar has their Attacks X3 and their Avenger mouse here today, and I'm going to be honest, this either has to stand out or it's going to sink into the market with the wide range of other keyboards and mice out there. So let's see if there's anything new or anything different that the Attacks and the Revenger bring. What? Is that the View 31? You should put a ring on it. Yes, time to make it RGB official. Thermaltake ring high static pressure fans because your case deserves a ring. Full details in the description below. Okay, so let's dive into it. So, first thing to consider with this board is the price. The second is the fact that it uses genuine Cherry MX switches underneath, red switches in this case. The third is the build quality of the board. And the fourth is of course that nice RGB lighting that you get with this. Now, I'm going to go a little bit into the details, but I'll make sure to be quick as I won't bore you with it too much. It has a full-sized layout with the media keys on the FN row and ABS keycaps. The bottom has two flip-out feet and it features a 1.8 meter braided cable terminating in two USB ports. We've also got 1000 Hz polling and full N key rollover, as well as software support for macros with a physical Windows key lock. The board weighs just under a kilogram, and finally, it comes in Cherry MX black, brown, blue, and red switches, which are on my sample. Okay, so that's out of the way, now let's see what makes or breaks this board. The aluminium frame is the standout part. Not only does it provide some structural rigidity, but it also just kind of looks cool. It also helps to reflect the lighting, which does look good. Even though this aluminium top plate is present, the build still feels a little bit underwhelming though, and I think the plastic frame lets it down a bit. The switches are pretty much what you'd expect. They feel like MX Reds. This is one of the cheaper RGB boards with MX switches though, so if you're just a little bit short of cash when you're looking at some of the pricier boards, this might be nice. Let's have a listen to what the switches sound like. So before we get into the admittedly beautiful lighting on the board, I want to go over some of the minor gripes I've had with it. The first off is the lack of dedicated media controls. I like having a volume wheel and play pause buttons, and it'd be nice for a bigger board to have them. My biggest issue though is that they changed the left windows button to the function key. Kruger consistently does this, and I really do hate it. You can remap them in software, but you still can't switch the stop keycaps around, so you'll have to get some third party ones for that. Overall, it's a bit of a hassle, and I just wish that you wouldn't have to do it. Okay, so let's get into the lighting and the software finally. Obviously, the lighting does look really good. Because the keys are raised, the backlight is bright and colourful, and there's really not much more to say. So the software that Kruger provides is pretty simple. We've got three main modes where you can rebind and set profiles. Uh, you've got your performance tab, which you can set polling rates, some repeat delay, and key rollover and repeat rates here. Uh, key assignment, where you can change the keys, set custom macros on the side here, new macros, uh, you've got some default modes which you can add to it or you can bind your own ones which helps also rebinding some of the keys which you don't like. Lighting control, this is where I'm not a big fan of it as you've got the three modes but it's not a very intuitive design. Uh, you have to select these weird tabs and drag them into each of the three circles and maybe that would be alright once you got used to it except I found that a lot of the time when I'm switching them around Instead of adjusting the intensity of the lighting or the mode, it simply just turns it off and I can't get it back until I reboot the software and replug in the keyboard. Uh, maybe it's just a bug for my specific one, but still it's a bit disappointing and I wish that the software was redesigned to be a bit more intuitive and easily programmable. And so that just about wraps up the Attax X3. It's a solid board with a decent price, but it's at risk of not standing out in this already oversaturated market. So now, let's move on to the Revenger mouse. Priced at $55, it is in the upper class of mice, and it's aiming for the FPS market. Once you get past the corny name of Revenger, there's some solid stuff to look at here. 
The standout feature of this mouse is the sensor choice. Sporting the top of the line 12K DPI, Pixar PMW3360 sensor. The shape takes some angular approaches near the front and has a moderately aggressive curve to it. It's a largish mouse and I find it fairly comfortable to use. And I think it's going to suit a fairly wide type of hand sizes and grip types. But if you can try it before you buy, it's always a good thing. The build feels good, but not great. The materials just feel a little bit average to me. The top plastic finish with the textured rubber sides works well, and there's no resounding issues, but overall it lacks some of the premium quality feel of other mice. The scroll wheel is good, and the primal kicks use Omron switches, which is always great. You have two side buttons, as well as a DPI toggle on the top, which you're going to have to push back to use. It's a bit weird at first, but once you get used to it, it's fine for the occasional use it gets. The lighting looks great. It's fairly subtle and classy. I like it. My main gripe with this mouse is actually the weight. At 115 grams, it's on the heavier side for an FPS mouse, and I found myself missing the lighter weight of other mice. Personally, I'd prefer if it was below 100 grams, ideally in the 80 to 90 range. When I'm in game, the sensor has no issues, but I wouldn't expect the 3362. It tracks perfectly and performs admirably, but the shape and the weight of the mouse does leave a little bit to be desired. It's almost there, but for me, it's just a little bit off from being what I want. That being said, personal preference will come into play, and some people might prefer the shape and the slightly heavier weight. And now, let's go into the software. And here's the software for the Revenger mouse. So it's pretty similar to the software for the Kruger keyboard earlier. You've got three main modes where you can store settings. You've got your performance tab, key assignment, and lighting. So in performance, you've got three DPI modes where you can adjust X and Y axes. You've got sniper DPI setting, you've got polling rates, angle snapping, lift height, all of the expected stuff in here, as well as the option to enable or disable mouse acceleration. Good to see. Uh, in key assignment, you can rebind any of the keys on the mouse. Pretty simple, but works well. And in the lighting control, you can choose what color it is, the breathing, fully lit or off. It's not as advanced as the keyboard, but it works better. So in a lot of ways, I actually prefer it, even though you do give up some of the functionality. Game management profile, you can set profiles for games. It's all pretty simple, as once again, I don't really like the skin on the Kruger software, but if you can get past that, the software for the mouse is pretty manageable. Always stay charged with Linky Power Up Power Banks, housed in gorgeous aluminum enclosure with dual USB and Type-C port with support for Quick Charge 3.0 to get your devices recharged fast. Available up to 20,100 milliamp hour capacities. Check them out in the description below. So that about wraps it up. Both the Attax X3 and the Revenger mouse are pretty solid offerings and decently priced as well. But they are a little bit too little, too late. I think maybe 6 to 12 months ago, they might have had a better chance, but in the current market, it's very oversaturated and there's nothing to make these stand out. So that about wraps up this review. Thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and comment with any questions, feedback, or just anything you want to say down below. So I'm Aiden with Hardware Canucks. Make sure to subscribe for more similar content and we'll see you in the next one.